Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, stuff is piling up over here again. And uh, so we're gonna do another odds and ends video and show you about some new items we've got for the shop. Uh, some of these are viewer gifts. Uh, some of these are some purchases that I have made recently. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go through these and kinda show you what all we got. So uh, let's get going. So first thing I'm gonna show off here, this is uh, something I've been anticipating and been really excited about for some time, but I've just finally got it in the shop. I've got a nice new uh, tool cabinet over here. And uh, this is made by Equipped Co. Has the big uh, drawers, kind of like a list of type cabinet. And uh, I actually purchased this item from uh, Jack Hoying uh, some time back and uh, Jack was making a trip down to Florida. He knew he was coming down in, uh, a couple weeks ago. So he said, if you buy it, I'll bring it down when I come. So this is something I've known about for probably six months now and have been really anxiously awaiting getting it in here because I really have been needing to get my tools a little bit better organized. I need more storage space out here in the shop. And uh, this right here is really gonna go a long way toward helping do that. So anyway, Jack is a longtime viewer of my channel. He has, I've purchased stuff from him in the past. He's uh, actually been down and visited me, uh, well, twice now that he came down the other day. And uh, uh, he's given me some stuff in the past. Jack also has a website where he sells machinist tools. I'm gonna put the link down in the description if anybody's interested in just checking it out, uh, seeing what he's always got new tools that he finds or whatever, and he sells them through the mail or what have you. So if you're interested in that, go check out uh, Jack's website. Uh, but anyway, I got this from Jack and I really, really, really just can't wait to get it loaded up. I've already got a couple of drawers in here uh, filled up and we're going to be filling up more. I don't know exactly, I haven't really decided exactly what all is going in here yet. Uh, one of the things that I want to do uh, during Christmas when I got some time off and I'm at home is I'm gonna get all of my toolboxes, all these tool chests back here. I've got a bunch of different toolboxes and some of these, like my little red craftsman box over there, uh, I've had some of those boxes for, well, since I was a teenager. Uh, I literally got that top box on that craftsman set back when uh, I first started driving, which would have been in the, I don't know, early to mid 1980s. So, you know, start doing the math. And uh, there's just a lot of stuff in these boxes. I've never really gone through them all and cleaned them out and my main thing is not so much to throw things away or get rid of things, but to get everything better organized. There is some just junk in there that probably needs to be chunked. Uh, I, but I know that I've, my problem that I've got right now is I've got so many different boxes that I've got like some of, the, some of this item over here and some of this item over here. I wanna get everything together where I can really go put my hands on something when I need it. And right now that's a challenge. And uh, having some more cabinet space here will really help me in getting things organized out here in the shop. So anyway, really excited about that. Uh, Jack brought it down, we unloaded it in the shop. Actually during the scraping class he came down. Uh, I have since gone through this and cleaned it up real good. Uh, it was, you know, had a bunch of just um, dirt basically on the inside of the drawers. So we had to get in there and clean all that out. But uh, it's, it's, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. All the drawers slide really well. Uh, he brought down a fair number of dividers and so forth that can, I can use to help organize these drawers. Uh, so anyway, really looking forward to that. I did have to put some new casters on it. Uh, he said it had a set of casters on them, but they were pretty much just trashed out. He took them off before he brought it. And uh, I just went by, uh, it was Lowe's or Tractor Supply or something, and picked up some casters and just put them right up underneath the bottom and it rolls around nicely in the shop. So anyway, got a few other items from Jack. Let me uh, start off with uh, some more of that kind of stuff. So next item here also came from Jack Coyne. This was another purchase that I made from him. And again, I made this purchase some time back. Jack goes around and finds a lot of these estates of retired machinists and tool and die makers and what have you and purchases them. And then, you know, he keeps some of it. He sells some of it, what have you. Uh, but this was an item that came from a tool and die maker. Uh, and I can't remember who K.A. is, but obviously a Mr. Carr here, and he purchased a lot, a, really a big, nice lot of some really nice stuff uh, that this gentleman had made, this being one of them. It was all in this wooden box here uh, that he made as well. You open it up on the inside, Ken Carr, that's his name. Uh, but there's two 
of these really nice ground in angle plates. I'm not going to pull the other one out. It's just so heavy. Uh, he's also got the, some end plates here that go on there and you can see his name, uh, Ken Carr. Uh, these, I think, mount up on the sides. There's the mounting hardware is down in the bottom of the box here. Uh, really, really nice, really, really nice set here of um, angle blocks. Uh, like I said, everything's ground in. I haven't checked it for squareness, but knowing the quality of work that this guy put into stuff, I'm sure they're, they're probably dead nuts on. This guy did some amazing, amazing work. Uh, but anyway, this was a nice little set here. Uh, this box is really heavy, but um, I'm sure that these will come in handy for some setups and what have you down the road. Uh, so anyway, another really, really nice item and something I'm really excited to have here in the shop. Another item here, again, uh, this come, came from Jack, and in this case, uh, this was something that we uh, did a little horse trading on. Uh, Jack was needing some machining work done and uh, left some items down and, and uh, going to probably actually have uh, at least a video, maybe two, on doing some uh, interesting machining work for him. But he asked me, he said, would I be interested in this compound sign plate in exchange for doing some machining work? I said, absolutely. So what this is, of course, is, the, well, the top is, it's, it's a mag base. So you turn, you flip that on and then that sticks the magnet down. So you would use this typically like on a surface grinder or something like that. This one here is, like I said, a compound sign plate. So it tilts in this direction. You put gauge blocks in here and you calculate uh, how many gauge blocks to get a precise angle on the top. And then it, it also um, will tilt in this direction. Well, it's tight right now, but trust me, it tilts up in this direction. So it's a compound magnetic uh, sign plate. Uh, and that's something I can use on my surface grinder uh, for doing compound angles. Uh, I've got a little compound plate over there that I've used before, but doesn't have a mag on the top. The other one, you have to bolt stuff down to it. It's also a little bit smaller. Uh, but anyway, this is really, really nice and definitely something that I'm sure you guys will see me using down the road. Jack was also kind enough when he was down to bring along a few gifts that he left, uh, some stuff that he just brought along and, and dropped off for me here. So there's a couple of uh, live, or excuse me, dead centers. Uh, you can use these in a lathe or what have you. Uh, chuck key wrench there, which uh, I actually need one. I don't know if this fits my chuck yet. I haven't checked it, but I, if not, I can machine that down to make it fit my chuck, but that's gonna be nice. And then here's a number five to number three Morse taper adapter, uh, which is something else uh, that I really kind of need because now that I have the Carlton drill press, it takes a number five Morse taper. And I don't, haven't had in the past very much number five stuff. I got a lot of, you know, number four, number three, number two, and even number one. Uh, but with these sleeves, I can actually go down to the tooling that I already have and use it in that, that uh, big drill press. So some nice stuff here. Another item that was a gift from Jack uh, was is this uh, Sterrett uh, DigiCheck, they call it. And I see it's a Sterrett number uh, 258. And uh, I don't know a whole lot about this item. I've done just a teeny amount of research on it, um, but I really haven't figured out exactly how it's used. But basically what this is, this is a height gauge. Uh, that is used, I think, in conjunction with gauge blocks where you can come in here and basically uh, get precision heights off of these different places in here and you can use gauge blocks in there with that to uh, get even more accurate. And you move this up and down, uh, the digital readout reads in thousands uh, and then you've got a, a scale on here that goes to the ten thousandths range. Now. There is a problem with it. It's, 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 not, it's not moving up and down, I think, right now. So I, I haven't even begun to try to figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, but I'm sure it can be fixed. Uh, but anyway, it's a really nice piece. This is a pretty expensive piece. Of course, this one's not in working condition. So uh, 
uh, we're going to have to probably have it sent. I'll probably have to send it up maybe like to Mark Rutowski or someone like that and see if he can uh, fix it. Uh, but this is supposedly a very accurate height gauge uh, once you get it fixed and calibrated properly. So uh, very nice item here. Uh, we're going to have to do some work to it, but I think when we get it going, it'll be really nice. So anyway, Jack, thank you for all the great items you brought down. Very much appreciated, and uh, I'm going to have fun with them. So next items here. This is pretty neat, I think. So we had a scraping class out here a couple of weeks ago and had some people come in and take the class. And it was uh, when I had sent out information on the class, one thing that I mentioned is, is that, hey, I got a coffee maker in the shop. If you drink coffee, make sure you bring your favorite mug or whatever to drink in or whatever, because I you know, wasn't necessarily going to have a bunch of coffee cups down here, coffee mugs. So one of the participants in the class, Vincent Salerno, uh, actually is a potter, as, as well as a machinist and other things. But uh, he said, hey, I'll fix the problem of no coffee cups in the shop. So he made up a batch of coffee mugs that he brought down with him. And this is just a small selection. He actually bought a, brought a box. I don't know, there was 20, 25 of these cups that he had made that he brought down. And uh, anybody that wanted to use one during the class, there was no shortage of these things. I know my wife came down here and raided a few and took some up to the house. Uh, and I think a few of the guys brought some home with them after the shop. And I've still got quite a few of them over there. But anyway, I was just going to show off a few of the different styles or designs that he had brought. And again, these were all the ones that he had um, actually made himself. He's got a, I think he told me he had a wood fire and kiln that he uh, you know, cures them in or uh, dries them in. He mixes up his own glazes that he puts on them. And uh, there's some really nice pottery here. So we got plenty of coffee mugs <laughs> out here in the shop now, and uh, as well as in the house and some other places. So anyway, thank you, Vince. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, these are really neat. I love the fact that they're uh, handmade. Uh, you know, I, I like things that people make themselves. And this is some really nice stuff. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Nice addition to the shop, and like I said, we got some up at the house as well. So uh, thank you very much. Got a couple of boxes of viewer mail that has come in, and I uh, got some more books here for the most part uh, that were brought out. And uh, these first ones here come from Elliot Jones. And Elliot lives up in Riverside, California. And uh, he sent along several books here. The Building Trades Handbook, he said that he probably picked these up about what was it, 50 years ago, I think is what he said, at a, at, a, at a book sale and didn't really have a need for them. American Machinist Handbook uh, by Colvin and Stanley. Uh, the Draftsman Mathematical Manual. Uh, and we got a couple of uh, ball bearing catalogs here uh, from New Departure. Uh, I think these are from the late 50s. Both of these, uh, 1958. So these will actually be pretty nice because I run into new departure bearings in old machines all the time and uh, new departure is no longer in business, hasn't been for many years now. Uh, you can still get most of these bearings, but it'd be nice to be able to look something up. So anyway, thanks a lot, Elliot, for sending on these items. Uh, as you know, I love my books. So uh, we'll definitely add these to the collection. Also got another uh, book here. This one comes from uh, John DeRosa, who's up in uh, Illinois. And this is the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. And he said, yeah, it, you know, you may not think you need that, but there's a lot of good information here that he uses in his shop all the time. And I reminded him that I actually work with chemistry a lot in my real job as a scientist, where I do agriculture research. And uh, so I'm sure that I will probably use this uh, for that as well, because from time to time I need to look up uh, chemical information as well, uh, which most of it you can find online, but sometimes I just like going to a book. So anyway, thank you very much, John, for sending that along. So the next group of items here uh, are some purchases that I made uh, this past weekend. Uh, over at the Moultrie, Georgia Automotive Swap Meet that they do a couple of times a year. 
And uh, if you watch Adam Booth's channel, no doubt you've seen him go there the last few years. I've been over the last few years, usually try to meet up with Adam while I'm over there. And again, that's what I did this year. So I drove over, uh, met up with Adam Booth, uh, his girlfriend Abby was there, as well as his brother Alex, and also Jim Bollinger at Do Right Fab. Uh, had come down for the day, so uh, myself and Jim and uh, uh, Adam, as well as Abby, we kind of hung out together all day long, going around looking for treasures, and all of us found uh, some really nice things uh, that we all picked up individually. And uh, anyway, I'm going to go through here and show you the little treasures that I picked up down at the Moultrie, Georgia swap meet uh, this past weekend. So up first here, I've got several items I picked up from one individual vendor that's there every year. I've purchased stuff from him in the past. I know Adam has as well. And uh, first thing here is a nice wooden box. Uh, it's hard to read on the top, but it's brown and sharp. And you open it up, and what's inside is another little uh, mag chuck. And this one's kind of interesting. Uh, when I saw it, I said, you know, I think that's something I could use. So it has a little switch on the front, kind of like an indicator. Uh, base and it has a bottom like an indicator base so this thing will basically stick down to whatever metal but when you turn on the magnet not only does it stick down but it has a flat surface on top where you can mag something down to that so I was thinking this would definitely be something that would be neat to use like maybe over on the middle machine I know that I've had many times where I'd have a little small part where it was going to be difficult to, to uh, chuck it up in a vise or something uh, but you needed it to be stuck down to the to the mill table. So with this, I could just literally stick this to the mill table and put my piece on top and, uh, you know, probably would have to make fairly light cuts, but still I could do some milling on this. You know, it really probably wouldn't be of that value to me over on the surface grinder because I already have a mag plate on there. I don't need to have something like this, but I definitely could see where this could come in handy on the milling machine and maybe even some other tools. So anyway, I saw that and uh, I think I might have uh, snatched it out from under Jim Bollinger, <laughs> but he didn't act quick enough. I got it first. Uh, other thing I got here, uh, this is also a brown and sharp item. And uh, what this is, is a little indicator base. Indi uh, and Adam Booth actually picked up one of these there a couple of years ago. And I've always thought that was a neat item. So let me put this together and kind of show you what we got. So basically it comes with this little cast iron base that has some T-slots in it. Uh, the, this sits down like on a surface plate or whatever you're working off of. And then you got a really nice heavy duty uh, arm here that comes up that you can adjust, move around. Uh, this arm moves in and out, or that adjusts it there. This one moves it in and out. Uh, and then it even had a little federal indicator on there. The indicator's uh, a little sticky. Might have to send that one off to have it worked on, but still a nice indicator on there. And came in a nice little box. So this is something that I think will be really nice to have uh, for doing measurements and what have you over on the surface plate. Uh, it's really heavy duty and stout, and it's got a nice base on there. And I'm thinking about maybe even, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, it's got a little surface rust on it. I'm gonna get that cleaned up. But uh, probably grind this head, maybe even scrape it in. Uh, really, it's nice and flat and parallel. And uh, I think this would be really nice to use over on the surface plate for doing some precision measurements. I really like that large footprint that's up underneath it. So when you're like sliding across a plate to get a measurement, you're riding over a very large area on the plate. So you're, you're not, it's not gonna be making little tiny movements up and down. So you can very easily use a tenth indicator with this, uh, or you know, I've even got a 50 millionth indicator over there, and something like that would work well with this setup. So anyway, pretty cool little brown and sharp item, uh, and couldn't pass it up, uh, just had to have it. So anyway, it came home with me. So he also had an assortment of different sizes of these little uh, Newman um, transfer punch sets, and uh, if you're not familiar with these, take these out and inside of this little holder are these little transfer punches. And what these are is they're, they're all threaded to a certain size and then right in the very center is a punch. And if you're working on something that has threaded holes in it and you want to transfer that, that hole pattern to something else that you want to match up, you can screw these little 
pieces in there and then uh, actually use the part uh, to press down on or what have you and it will um, transfer a center punch mark on the very center of those holes. Uh, and each one of these has multiples of these inside of them. So, um, and he had a, a bunch of these in an assortment of different sizes. I've actually got a couple of sizes of these over in my toolboxes. Uh, but I just, I've just basically, I picked through pretty much got one of everything that he had in his pile and uh, brought them home with me uh, because you just, like I said, you use, I use this stuff from time to time. You never know which sizes you're gonna need. Most of the stuff that I have over there are sizes that I have needed and I had to go find them. So anyway, when you see stuff like this, you just get it. Uh, he had a good price on them. So I just picked up the whole lot there of, uh, that you see. And let's see what we got here. This is a mm, 5 8 18. 9 16 18, uh, I think this one was half inch, maybe, no, 7 16 20, 5 16 24, 5 16, oh, I got two 5 16 24, I didn't realize that, it's all right, and then quarter 28s, and like I said, I've got a few other sizes over in my toolboxes. I thought I had a half inch 13, it was over there on the table, I went to counting them, I'm like, I'm missing one, anyway. So there's uh, the sets that I got. So here's a pretty neat little score. I was walking along and just happened to notice up underneath the table of one of the vendors out there that mostly had car stuff, didn't really have any machining stuff on this table. And I saw these little green cases and I recognized them uh, because I actually have what these are used for. These are Jacobs uh, rubber flex collets. Uh, so if you look at these, these are collets that go in a Jacobs um, uh, Chuck, uh, that I, I've got a, when I got my 10 double E, I actually got a, a Jacobs, uh, collet Chuck that goes on that lathe. And it actually came with a set of collets, but the ones that it came with are not in the greatest of shape. And he had basically not one, but two sets of these sitting up underneath his table. And, um, he really wanted to get rid of them bad. He gave me a pretty good deal on them. Uh, I said, well, how much you want for me? He said, ah, oh, and I'm not even going to tell you what it was. I'm embarrassed uh, because it was, it was a good deal. But he said, this much for all of them. So I just, I literally, I'd, I'd only opened up one of the boxes. I just threw them all in my buggy and uh, uh, paid them the money and off I went. And then I got back to looking at them later and realized I had uh, a duplicate set here. And like I said, I actually already have this same set. Uh, but these are in much better shape. So I'm going to probably keep one of these for myself. And I don't know, we may, if somebody needs a set of those, let me know. Uh, maybe we can do a little horse trading or something and uh, go from there. But anyway, I was pretty, pretty pumped on that one. That was pretty neat. And uh, like I said, uh, the other guys just walked right past them. Uh, and I just happened to see them out of the corner of my eye. And uh, I got lucky on that one. Picked up another one of these number five Morse taper adapters. This one is number five to number four. And uh, again, trying to put together a set of these because I'll be needing them over on my Carlton drill press. So anyway, that was a nice little score. So this was another nice little score I picked up. These are actually, they're in a cheap Chinese uh, case, but these are actually all Starrett. He said he just, he didn't have something to put them in loose and he had one of these cases floating around, so he put them in there. And uh, they've got a little bit of use to them, but these are all Starrett. Uh, long reach pin punches. I use these things all the time with working on machines and that's a nice set of Starrett ones um, with all the different sizes. I got a couple of different sizes of those long pin punches like that, uh, but I didn't have a complete set. So anyway, I jumped on that when I saw it. Uh, again, some of the other guys had picked it up and looked at it and passed it. And I said, no, nope, I'm taking that one home with me. So uh, anyway, I'm really excited about that because I use these things all the time. Picked up these little brushes off of a table. Uh, they want a dollar piece for them. Uh, they say they're made in USA. I'm gonna, you know, uh, most a lot of the stuff came off of stuff that's mostly Chinese stuff. So whether that's actually made in USA or not, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, there's a couple of brass ones and a couple of stainless steel ones in here. I use these in the parts washer, and a dollar a piece. I just said, you know what, I'm getting them. Here's another cool little find. This is a little uh, height gauge, uh, really nice, got the case hardening on it. Uh, 
You can use this over on the surface plate, what have you. Uh, actually, what I use these with more, more than just using them as a surface gauge is uh, using them with an indicator. And I've got a, a bigger one that's nice like this, but this is a little small one. And who, who made this one? I think it was Lufkin. Yeah, it says it right there, Lufkin, uh, number 521. Got the beautiful case hardening on it, $115 for it. Looks like it's in great shape. So anyway, that one came home with me as well. And here's something else I picked up off of a table. It has nothing to do with the machine shop. But these are little uh, uh, pieces that you can put in a gas can to give a vent. You know, modern gas cans, for so-called safety reasons, they don't put vents in them anymore, and you can't get any gas out of them. They drive me crazy. And uh, basically, you just drill a hole and you punch this down in there, and now you got a vent on your gas can like the old fashioned gas cans used to have. So anyway, I picked up a handful of those uh, to fix some of my gas cans with. Uh, don't tell OSHA. So up next, I got a couple items here. Uh, this all came off of a gentleman's table named Luke Altsman. I, I, Remember that, but uh, anyway, Luke uh, actually watches my YouTube channel. He made a comment when I walked up to the booth and started looking at some stuff. It's like, oh, we don't let YouTube guys in here. So uh, actually, uh, Jim and Adam and myself, we spent a good time looking through his stuff because he had a lot of neat things. Uh, and these are a couple things I bought from him. So these are all basically uh, little uh, round over uh, mills or uh, uh, radius mills that you can use to like put a radius on a corner uh, like on your milling machine and he had a whole box there uh, I suspect that some of these this one here is a weld and these other ones aren't marked I suspect that some of these may be uh, imports but uh, every now and then you just need one of these in fact again I've got a couple of sizes that I have bought over the years as I needed them uh, but he basically had a set of them there uh, this is a uh, half inch radius down to 1 16th inch radius and I just bought the whole set from him. Uh, and then he also had some brand spanking new uh, inch and a quarter end mills here. Uh, they may have been, actually I don't even think they've been used at all. These things were super sharp, uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, in mills, I can use these over on the on my horizontal mill. So anyway, that's another nice little item. I got a couple of those. I think Adam Booth picked up one of those as well. Uh, we wiped out his stock on those. Uh, I think he won like five dollars a piece for these and ten dollars a piece for those, which I thought was a pretty good deal. So I, I jumped on it and brought them home with me. So there you go, guys. New tools for the shop. Uh, I just can't seem to stop it sometimes. Uh, when I find deals, I just have to have to pick things up and uh, fortunately found some good stuff and had a couple of nice items sent in this time as well. Uh, some really nice gifts that came in as well as some stuff I, I purchased. So excited about all the new items uh, that we got out here. Had a good time down in Moultrie. Uh, thanks to Adam Booth and Jim Bollinger. Got to bum around with you guys all day. We had a good time. Uh, Abby as well. Uh, I think we, I looked on my phone and uh, I walked between four and a half five, and five miles uh, over at the Moultrie swap meet. Uh, I'm pretty tuckered out. <laughs> we were out there and of course I'm pulling a little wagon along behind me the whole time too that I was putting stuff in. In fact, all of us were. So uh, anyway, uh, had a good time though. It was, it was a lot of fun and really enjoy getting to, to spend some time with those guys. So lots of fun. So with that, that's going to be a wrap on this video. So anyway, we'll catch you guys next time. I'm shooting this. Uh, it's going to should go live the Monday before Thanksgiving. So for you guys in the U.S., uh, who celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving this week. And uh, I know that I have an awful lot to be thankful for at my house, and I hope that you do too. So with that, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.